Are there advantages to aging? Yes, I am Debbie Jo Horton and welcome to Advantages to Aging. Join my guests and I as we discuss aging and what makes for a healthy lifestyle, which results in a quality life. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome listeners to another episode of Advantages to Aging, where we talk about all of those advantages, because why would you focus on the disadvantages? What you focus on grows. Today, we have Ellie Ambinder with us again. If you've listened to her other episodes, you know how phenomenal she is in helping caregivers to really take care of themselves as they take care of their loved ones who are starting to decline with Alzheimer's or dementia. First, welcome, Ellie. Thank you. Thank (laughs) you so much for inviting me. Absolutely. Today we're going to talk about, okay, let's just say I've made the decision that my loved one definitely is declining and they're going to have to go into a facility. What do I do now? Well, that's a really amazing question. And of course, um, I think that there's two sides to that coin. The fr- there's there's either the your loved one has to go to some place because you no longer have, for a variety of reasons, the ability to take care of that person, or the person is going to age in at home. Okay, the question becomes: What do I do now? What have what should I do? How do I get organized? What do and once they're in a facility, what do I do then? Mm. Because then your life has changed completely. Right. So I just, as you know, just had a, a newsletter out about what do I do now that he or she or my loved one is in a facility. I would say to you that. This conversation about what do we do now has to do with how the caregiver can start to think about, A, the changes in their lives, because you go from what I used to call the two-hour alarm, wherever, if I was at work or if I was somewhere else, I always expected at two hours I'd get a call from someone taking care of my husband, because... It wasn't necessarily based in logic, but a lot of this is not based in logic. It's the emotional response to, oh, my God, what's going on? Right. All of a sudden, your house is very amazingly quiet. That's the good news, and that's the bad news. Mm. The good news is that a lot of the stress is not in front of you. It's somewhere else. And the bad news is... You've just come away from probably years of taking care of someone and watching the decline. And it can be dementia and it can be Alzheimer's, but it can be other things too. I take care of caregivers that are worried about someone with cancer, worried about someone with special needs children or all kinds of things. Caregiving is universally caregiving. Right. So what do you do now when your house, your home is suddenly quiet? Maybe you're going every day or every other day or once a week, depending on the stage in Alzheimer's of your loved one. Let's start with what should I do first? Like, do I keep everything? Do I throw it all out? Is there some staging to the whole process? I mean, it's a little bit different if your loved one has died and it's definite in your mind they're not coming back. And so you have that grieving process, but you also know that they're not going to care if you keep that collection of golf shoes that <laughs> you could they're never They're not going to care, but you as the caregiver don't know that they're not going to care because you haven't come to that point yet. Mm. I have a client who's, um, uh, and, and. I'm not going to make this as a broad-based statement, but I would say women are quicker to clean the house out or to get things organized than men are. When I have a male client, very often when I walk in the house, 
There's boxes of stuff everywhere. Oh, I meant to get rid of her, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I was working on getting her clothes out of the house. They got to go. Yeah. Whether the caregiver is taking care of someone living or someone who's passed away, you and I have both had that experience. Right. So most of our listeners are women. So let's yeah. let's kind of focus on what what should they do? Even though, like you say, that women are quicker to start to organize and get rid of some of those things. Like sometimes just the the emotion that's attached to some of those things, or as I said, they've moved into a facility and you're kind of like, do I get rid of this stuff? What if they want it and we kind of placate ourselves to thinking that one they're going to remember they even had it and two even if it was right in front of them would they even know it was theirs so how do and, how do we kind of well there's another that? ingredient to that too dj and it, and it it is that even though we know and we've watched, and particularly in terms of Alzheimer's, if you watch the uh, degeneration and you know that they're never coming back, but there's a part of your emotions that keeps saying, well, maybe they'll have a magic pill. You know, maybe some drug company will have a magic pill, or maybe they read the 12 MRIs that you had the person take wrong or it's strictly an emotional response it's it's it totally is so here you are in your house or or where maybe you moved into a smaller condo maybe you do an apartment like i had um there you are it's all the stuff what do you do next right and it's not so much that you can organize yourself but there's this whole emotional thing that says, oh, my God, this is the end. Now, clients will say to me, I know they're never coming home. I know it. I know when I go to visit them that that's not the person that collected this beautiful blah, 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 whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, but there's this part of you. There's two things that happen. One is your emotions say, what if? And two, there's a very big depression side of this that prevents you from going through one stuff. You know, again, when somebody passes away, you know that's final. There's there's no going back. You, you're not going to, this person who you've lost is not going to be wearing that shirt anymore. Um, it's a little different when someone is still, if you will, for lack of a more elegant way of saying this, when someone's still breathing. My suggestion, go ahead. Well, it, it, I, I know sometimes it comes down to, even, even if they're not living with you anymore and they're in a living facility um, where someone else is taking care of you and you've got all their clothes, right? And you start sorting through those clothes and trying to keep the emotional, memories from coming back as you're pulling those clothes out of the closet I found that it was it I would fluctuate back and forth from the oh I remember when I gave him this sweater to oh my god so and so would look incredible in this sweater or um we used to do a lot for the homeless so when I remembered that it was like oh I the clean out of the closet was so much faster because I knew I would have bags and bags of clothes to give to the homeless and that he would want that hey DJ here are you like what I used to be like with multiple different bottles of supplements and minerals and nutrients and trying to remember when you're supposed to take what when? Gone are those days. Niora's simplified system packs active ingredients in the smallest amounts of products that you have to take, making keeping your wellness and weight management simple. 
Well, it's very interesting because when my husband passed away, he had he had never ever acknowledged that he was going to pass away. He was going to live to be 150. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it was all my responsibility. What do I do? And much like you, I decided that I wanted someone to use the things that were there. I wanted it to be for a purpose because, because I did. Right. But the first thing I did, so we're talking about two separate things now. We're talking about after someone's passed away, or we're talking about what do you do when they first go. It's a little different, or for me, it was a little different. My husband died at home, so I I didn't have the issue of the the facility. Most of my clients do have the issue of the facility, which is why I wrote the newsletter. I think you have to sort of get in your mind the fact that in your heart of hearts, you know they're not coming home. They're not coming home. And if you change your mind about having someone in a facility and determine you're going to bring them home for the rest of their lives, it's not like it was when it was 10 years ago or when you bought that sweater and had a good time saying, oh, don't you love this new, I thought this color, I thought it would look good. No, no, it's not that at all. The The paradigm has changed forever. You know, when somebody goes into assisted living, you have to bring in furniture and clothes and toothbrushes and all, all everything to outfit a small apartment, but operative on small. Nice. And, right, you can bring in, pictures of a client whose um, wife went into a facility and the family brought all a wall of family pictures. I've seen that a lot. And that's lovely. I I can tell you that they do that more for themselves than for the person who's looking at it because the problem is there comes a point where you, where the patient says, who are all those people? Right. So Got to be very careful. And and people don't think about this because, as I said, emotions kick in. It's a monumental change, a terrible change, and it's final. So, and so it is what a monumental we, task, too. So how do you get started? So you've taken the the furniture, whether it's from your house or you've bought new furniture. You've set up the apartment. They're there. And your home with the rest of the stuff. Right. Okay. So I would say the first thing you do is, short of calling me in because I can do it in and help you organize, the first thing you do is you got to admit to yourself, I have to do something. I, I have to take back my life. Now, those are harsh words, mm -hmm. take back my life. But the truth is, if you don't do that, you're stuck. Yeah, you're, you're stuck with the clothes. You're stuck with the boxes filled with the clothes I'm going to take to savers or to whoever you determine you're going to give them to. You've got to get someone in to gently lead you into a monumental organization. So I try to say to people, you can only do this. You can only start out by organizing your home by doing it two hours a week, then you can increase it to three hours a week. Then you set up the bags and you put the things in. Don't try to do it all at once because you can't do it. So tell so, us about the bags, setting up bags. All right. So if I go in to organize someone's home, I have three bags. One is keep, one is charity, and the third one is throw out. And anything that goes in throw out, Never comes back in my house. Never. Okay. Nobody nobody really would wear them if we're talking about clothes. Maybe it's shoes that are scuffed or old sneakers. I, You know, whatever you can't picture someone that you love wearing or you don't see that you want to have an emotional attachment to this thing. Right. Or out and out. Sometimes I have to write on the third 
for package for my clients I write. O U T out. And I would think that it would be important to, I mean, if you're only spending two hours a week or even three hours a week, that not waiting for that out bag to get full, but as soon as you're done with that two hours, whatever's in there, put it in the trash. Like physically get it out of your space. Exactly right. And and then just set up the next one, the next right. out. There are, you know, if, if you live in a particular town, and you have um, loads and loads and loads of books, very often the library will take it. So that's not throw out, that's donate. If or you recycle. Live in- Sometimes you can recycle a bunch of things as well. Right. The Habitat for Humanity resale stores take books. And I always like the idea of somebody else, the 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 life goes on in a different way because someone else is using the things. Mm. Um, I will say to you that um, when my husband passed away, the first thing I did, not the first thing, but one of the things I did very quickly was to call my, I have five grandchildren and I called them in and said, take whatever you want. My husband collected a lot of baseball hats. So take whatever you want. Take a sweater. Take what's what's something that meant something to you with him. Once they did that, then um, I had already done my own sort. In other words, mm-hmm. um, and I think that that sort of applies as well if you're if you're even cleaning out your house. Now I say two hours a week, DJ, because. If I said to someone, we're going to work eight hours, they would just, it's way overwhelming. overwhelming. Well, not only that, people don't have that kind of time to just devote often. Although sometimes, you know, now that your caregiving responsibilities are not as heavy, you suddenly have time that you don't know what to do with. Correct. Um, So if there was one thing that you would encourage our listeners to start to do today, what would that be? Which scenario are we talking about? It doesn't matter. Whatever you think is most important. I think the most important thing is to understand that you are on an emotional roller coaster and it's okay. And if you're mad and you take something that meant something in your married life or your partnership life Mm -hmm. and you take it and throw it in the throw out thing and make it crash it's okay because you're in an emotional upheaval for which you have not been prepared for no matter you know I can talk from now till 20 uh, 20 hours from now you're not prepared because because it's tough it's terrible hard it's so painful and so if you start with a little if you can start with four hours a week do that but i think the most important thing is two things understand you're in an emotional upheaval and please get a shrink talk to someone that's important and secondly start the process because if you don't start it accumulates and the chaos gets worse and worse. And the grieving a- doesn't end if you are not dealing with the physical things that, that remind you. Ellie, this has been so amazing. It's always such a pleasure to hear all of your tips and tricks. And ladies and gentlemen, if you happen to be listening out there, you can find information about Ellie and how to contact her in the show notes. Until our next episode, be fabulous. And don't forget, take at least one thing that you've learned today and put it into action. Thank you so much. Do you think one of the biggest advantages to aging is all the knowledge we gain along the way? Me too. What did you learn today? Share with me in my Facebook group, with the same name as this podcast, Advantages to Aging. Now hit subscribe so you don't miss all the tips to come in future episodes.